A very good afternoon once again, and also a very happy Advent Sunday to you all. Um, I want to thank God and also our Reverend um, Reverend An and also Samonin for giving me this privilege to share the word with you all. Um, we are now in the season of Advent, <clears throat> and today is the first Sunday of. Advent for this year. The Advent season is a time of waiting and anticipating and also preparing. It's a time when Christians reflect on the first coming of Christ, at the same time look forward to his second coming. In Matthew 24, 36 through 44, the text that we just read, Jesus speaks about his second coming, urging his followers to stay awake, remain faithful, and prepare for his return. Our topic this afternoon, living in the present with our eyes on the future, challenges us to balance active, faithful living in the present while maintaining watchfulness, hope, and readiness for Christ's return. I want to emphasize on three crucial points that our text, scripture text, unfolds. The first point that I want to emphasize is on the uncertainty of the time. The uncertainty of the time, which we find from verses 36 through 39. Jesus begins this passage by affirming the certainty of his return, but emphasizing the unknown timing. Verse 36 reads, But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. In this text, Jesus makes it very clear that no one can predict the exact time of his return. This uncertainty is not meant to paralyze us with fear or anxiety, but to motivate us to cultivate humility, trust, and dependence on God. In verses 37 to 39, Jesus compares his return to the days of Noah when people were busy going about their daily routines, eating, drinking, and marrying, not realizing that judgment was coming. Jesus uses this example to show that the world will be unconcerned about his return continuing in its pleasures and distractions. distractions. But the lesson here is clear. The future will break in into our present unexpectedly. Just as people in Noah's time were caught unprepared, there will be many people caught unprepared when Jesus returns. This is the danger of being preoccupied with worldly concerns. We also can easily become so absorbed in our everyday life that we forget the ultimate reality that Jesus will return. Here, I want to leave two questions for us to think about. Number one, are we living with an awareness that Christ will return at any moment? Or are we so caught up in the daily routines without thought of eternity? Are we living with a sincere concern for eternal values? Or are we distracted by temporary matters? Think on these questions. 
Advent reminds us not to be so concerned, concerned or consumed by the present that we forget what lies ahead. Advent calls us to wake up and be aware of the larger reality beyond our immediate circumstances. Advent invites us to pause and realign our focus with God's purposes. The second point that our scripture text emphasizes is living watchfully in the present. Living watchfully in the present. Verses 40 through 42 talks about this. Now, Jesus shifts the focus from uncertainty of the time of his return to the necessity of a watchful, a watchful living. In verses 41, 40 and 41, Jesus speaks of two people in the field, one taken, the other left, two women grinding a mill, one taken and the other left. The distinction between those taken and left emphasizes personal accountability. No one can rely on someone else's faith or readiness. Salvation is personal, so each person must live a life of faith. This challenges believers to examine their faith and ensure that they are living in a manner consistent with God's purposes. For the return of Christ will be sudden and decisive, and there will be a separation between those who are ready and those who are not. Let's read verse 42 together. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Here, the command to watch is not just a passive or simply waiting, but an active state of readiness. Keeping watch means to stay spiritually awake and alert. The unpredictability of the time of Jesus' return encourages believers to live with constant awareness of their spiritual condition. In other words, keeping watch emphasizes the importance of living each day with an awareness of eternity. So now, the question is, how do we practice watchfulness? We can live a watchful life by being ready at all times. Jesus warns against assuming that there is more time. So we ought to live as though he could return at any moment. Maintaining readiness through faithfulness, integrity in both public and private aspects of life. We can also live a watchful life by cultivating an intimate relationship with God. Through daily prayer, spending time in prayer to deepen our connection with God, by regularly reading and meditating on the Bible to align our heart and mind with God's will, by inviting the Holy Spirit to guide our decisions and actions daily. We can live a watchful life by practicing holiness and integrity, by keeping short accounts with God by confessing sin and turning away from it. And also by asking us ourselves if our daily choices reflect Christ's teaching and living in a way that honors God, whether in work or in our relationships or leisure. 
So living watchfully in the presence means embracing a balance between readiness for the future and faithfulness now, trusting in God's timing and sovereign plan, while being watchful for Christ's return. Christians are called to engage faithfully in the present moment. Rather than retreating from life, this involves fulfilling responsibilities, loving others, and reflecting Christ's character in everyday actions. I want to leave three questions for us to reflect upon. The first question. Are there areas in your life where you need to wake up spiritually? Number two, are you investing enough time in prayer, reading scripture, and cultivating a deep relationship with God today? What are the distractions in your life that hinder spiritual watchfulness? The third and final point that our scripture text emphasizes is on living in the present with an eye on the future. Verses Matthew chapter 24, verses 43 through 44. Okay, let's read together. But understand this. If the order of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Amen. Here, Jesus uses the illustration of a house owner. A house owner protecting his house from a thief. And he emphasizes vigilance and readiness as the timing of his return is unknown. Jesus doesn't want us to know about the time of his return, but he wants us to be ever ready for it. The urgency here is very clear. We cannot wait until it's too late to change our lives. This urgency in the Christian life should not lead us to fear, but to action, fueled by hope. The reason is because we look forward to Jesus' return, not as a thief. Jesus isn't a thief. Right? But the return of Jesus, we look forward to it as the fulfillment of all God's promises and the fulfillment of our salvation. Amen. So the hope of Jesus' return doesn't just prepare us for the future, but it transforms our present life, prompting us to live faithfully, love deeply, and act boldly. Amen. Our future hope in Jesus' return should profoundly influence our priorities, our choices, our attitudes toward God and toward others. Here are some practical ways that I want to uh, share on how we can let this hope, the hope of Christ's return to shape our daily living. We can do that. Or we need to let this hope shape us, our lives, by living with eternal perspective. Living with eternal perspective. It's crucial that we invest time in loving God and loving others 
instead of being consumed by material pursuits, focus on nurturing relationships that matter eternally. The importance of stewardship is to use our time, our resources, our, our energy, our talents wisely, knowing that they are entrusted to us by God for His glory alone. Secondly, we need to cultivate holiness and obedience. We need to be intentional about turning away from sin and cultivating virtues such as humility, patience, and love. We need to reflect on Christ's character in our interactions, showing kindness, forgiveness, and integrity. We can let the hope of Christ's return transform our life by practicing watchfulness and prayer. The importance of daily devotion We need to stay connected to God through prayer, scripture, reading and meditation, and keeping our heart attuned to God's will. And we need to have an anticipatory, thankful, grateful heart, living with a spirit of thankfulness for the promises of God that will be fulfilled when Christ returns. Lastly, we can let this hope transform us by enduring hardship with hope. We need to let the certainty, the sureness of Jesus' return, strengthen our resolve to endure difficulties in our lives, any kind of struggles that we encounter, we, we face, knowing that Eternal joy awaits. We need to replace anxiety, worries with trust, remembering that God's plan is unfolding perfectly in His perfect time. So by living in these ways, our hope in Christ becomes not just a future expectation that we are waiting, but a tangible reality pointing others toward the beauty of Christ's coming kingdom. In conclusion, in this Advent season, let us be reminded of the need to live with an eyes, with our eyes on the future while living faithfully in the present. The return of Jesus is certain but its timing is unknown. Therefore, we are called to live lives of watchfulness, vigilance, and preparedness, knowing that our hope is anchored in the return of our Lord. So let us look forward to His coming with hope and expectations, while living today in a way that reflects 